long run costs and economies of scale. Uh, this is like the fourth cost oriented video I've made for my principles classes. Uh, but in the long run, things are going to be a little bit different from what we were doing before. And the primary difference is in all my previous videos, we assumed that capital was fixed and now it's not. We're allowing for long run for firms to be able to choose to sell off their capital. And so because of that, we're going to assume that there are no fixed costs in the long run. All costs are variable if you widen out your time horizon enough. Even a large building that you're stuck in this year, if you wait till next year, you can get out of it. Or your 30 year mortgage might feel like a fixed cost for 30 years, but if you widen the time horizon long enough, it becomes a variable because you don't have to pay it anymore. And I guess in the meantime, you could sell it too, right? If you wait long enough, fixed costs can change. And so in the long run, we just assume that there aren't any. Everything's variable. And our graph for long run costs looks a lot like the other one. We have quantity here. We have costs on this axis. We've got this long run. We've got this long run average total cost curve. And we also have a long run marginal cost curve. And we could do the others too, but because there's no fixed cost, that wouldn't exist. And that means that the variable cost would be the average total cost curve. So this graph actually looks simpler. Something to point out, however, is that we're not talking about one firm on one day anymore. We're talking about a bunch of different versions of the same firm. It's kind of a tricky thought, but what we're going to be looking at is the lowest cost way of producing every single quantity. So if I choose a quantity here, I will find the firm that had the minimum average total cost right there. This is ATC. This is MC. If I want to look at a quantity over here, I find the size of a firm where that was its minimum average total cost. It's kind of hard to get like a handle on what's going on there, but every point is a cost minimizing point for a given size of a firm. And so what we really are dealing with here on this queue is the firm's size. How much business does it do? What, how much output does it create? And so the fact that there's these big trends in the slope on one side going down and on the other side going up is very interesting to us. Everything to the left of here, as you increase Q, long run average total cost falls. And everything to the right of here Forever, if you increase Q, long run average total cost rises. So what are we looking at when we see this? In the blue range, the bigger a firm is, the lower its average total cost in the long run. Bigger firms will have lower costs in this blue range. That's important. And this range over here, after this queue down here, bigger firms will have higher average costs in the long run. And so when you see something like this, this middle area down here, all these low costs, that's probably where you're going to see your industry settle down. We'll be with firms in that size range because a firm in that range can push out small mom and pop shops with high costs. A firm in that range can push out firms that have gotten too big and expanded beyond their capacity. Firms in this range have the lowest possible costs. And we call this quantity that's associated with the lowest possible cost, minimum efficient scale. It's the scale of your business 
that has the minimum cost. It's the most efficient in its production process. So this blue range has a name. We call it economies of scale. And this red range also has a name. We call it diseconomies of scale. And how do we define these two things? By these relationships. If quantity goes up and long run average total cost is falling, everything left of this point right here, that is experiencing economies of scale, meaning that bigger firms will have lower average total cost. Bigger firms of lower cost than smaller firms. On this range, after this Q bar, we have diseconomies of scale where bigger firms will start to have higher average costs. And the way your costs in your industry are shaped will have big impact on how many firms are in your market. Because what firms want to do and the firms that will survive the best are the firms down here at the bottom. This Q, by the way, has a label. We call it minimum efficient scale in industrial organization. That's the Q with the lowest possible average total cost. And firms here in this sweet spot at the bottom can push out smaller mom and pop shops with high costs and it can undercut big firms with high costs. This sweet spot will have the lowest cost in the market. Uh, if you want to think of like what this looks like in real life, you can think of Walmart. They've probably found this sweet spot. They're big enough that they have lower costs than just about everybody on just about everything. Now I mentioned that these graphs might shape industry. Let me give you some ideas of what that could mean. Let me give three versions of this graph. We could have a version of this graph where our long run average total cost curve just looks like this or something close to it. In which case, small firms would always have the lowest cost and they would dominate. This market would probably have lots and lots and lots of little firms. If your graph looks more like this, you'll have a concentration of firms near the bottom competing with each other. And if your graph looks like this, then your biggest firm possible will have the lowest average costs. The more we move from left to right on these three graphs, I know they're not well labeled, but as we move from left to right on these three graphs, we're going to see tendency towards larger and larger firms. And in this case on the far right, we get a special case that we will return to later called a natural monopoly where the costs are such that one firm will have the lowest possible cost than any combination of smaller firms. But anyway, I hope this has all been helpful to you uh, to make some sense of the long run costs and the economies of scale. If not, too bad. There's lots of other videos on YouTube, but my kid is done with his baseball practice and I got to drive him home. So thanks for watching, guys. Good luck and happy econing.